this is Eric Kretz from Stone Temple Pilots, and may the rock be with you. There he is. G'day, mate. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your time, man. What uh, what city uh, are you zooming from? From Sydney. All right. Going to be there yes. in a few weeks. Oh, wait. We're looking forward to that, I can tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is funny, though. It's just like... You guys are probably, I think, the first international tour heading over to Australia in geez, two years. I mean, how ready are you to finally come over and play these under the Southern Stars shows? Uh, we're primed, primed and ready. We did a we did a month of touring back in October, November here in the states. So that was great because the audience was just hungry for it, and everyone mm. was really excited. Uh, shows went over well. Um, so I think. Uh, it's just it's it's always fun to do international shows, and then uh, the majority of these on this tour are going to be outdoor shows, which I love, yep. um, especially with the kind of weather that you guys are akin to. So um, it's it's going to be I'm looking forward to it a lot. Awesome! I'll be at the Sydney show. I wouldn't miss it. It's a, such a good lineup, man. You got so many great bands on this bill. It's just going to be insane. Yeah, we've uh, we played with Bush uh, quite a few times, and Cheap Trick we toured with on the tiny music album. And uh, that was just such a treat because when I was a little uh, junior high school kid, I mean, I love cheap tricks. So um, it was so great to watch them every single night and, you know, um, just looking forward to that. Yeah. Nice. Now, when we talk about set lists on shows like this, how, what can people expect when they come and see an STP show? Uh, if, if we're like doing a headlining show, you can expect two hours of, you know, a, a bunch of radio staples and a bunch of deep cuts. Uh, on this tour, because there's so many bands, mm. um, you know, you got an hour each with each band. So uh, they'll definitely be the ones that everybody knows. And we're going to try to throw in a couple of deeper cuts um, every night, you know, and change those around to keep us keep us fresh. So um, it's going to be good. It's going to be a nice rotating bill and um, there won't be long waits in between. It's, it's going to be great. Great. What's the one song though, that you love throwing in a set list that you just absolutely love smashing out every night? <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's tripping on a hole in a paper heart. I just, I mean, Dean's guitar solo on that is just ripping. Mm. Um, and, uh, it's just such a great, uh, high, high, uh, you know, um, fast tempoed song, but there's, uh, we, we've done coma before in the past. Uh, that's, that's a really good deep album cut. It should have been a single, but never was, um, so, you know, it's very, it's all hands on for all of us, man, to play all those parts. So um, mm. that's always a good one. And Lounge Fly, too. I love, I've always loved doing that one, especially if, if it's an uh, indoor, indoor arena that we're doing because the light show around that one is so mm -hmm. great. And, you know, Robert gets to pull out the, uh, the acoustic 12 string guitar for the, for the middle part of the song. It's just, it just works really great. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Whatever you play, I'm looking forward to it. It's been a long time. I just want to see a show. So that's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you did release a new album just before the pandemic set in back in 2020 and everything just stopped i mean is it close to the first time we're going to hear some of these songs live uh i don't know if we'll be playing anything off the perdita album because that one was made with with more of an acoustic vibe mm. uh in mind so it's, it's just and then we were gonna do the tour that got cancelled on that we were scheduled to go out in march right around the end of March, right when everything got shut down. And at the time, we were actually going to bring out extra players, uh, um, people that could play keyboards, extra guitars, strings, and um, a couple wind instruments. And we just really wanted to not only do that album justice, but there's other songs in the STP catalog that we've never been able to do because we actually just need extra players. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and uh, yeah, it was just a real bummer. I mean, bummer for us and for the whole world because everything got shut down. Yeah, right there. it was a bit nuts. But yeah. you've had Jeff on board now for the best part of five years. So what's he brought to the band that you feel it needed or may have been missing previously? Oh, uh, he's just spot on. He's spot on every night, which is really great. And um, especially you'll see at the live shows, his, I like to say his voice is a mile wide. I mean, <laughs> it's just huge. And, uh, and, and it's going to be good because you're going to hear, hear how strong his voice is. And then, um, and then when you hear Robin from, from Cheap Trick too, he's got, you know, just that classic kind of bluesish, powerful rock and roll voice. It's just undeniable. You know, it's just one of those, one of those great, great, uh, uh, attributes to 
throws in with the band. Nice. Are we expecting like an all-star jam or something at these shows where they all come out and have a bit of a play? Um, I'm sure there will be because everybody's friends. So originally, uh, this the second time around <clears throat> that it got canceled uh, b- because we were going to have to do a 14-day lockdown. The mm. original plan was they're going to stick us a couple hours outside of Sydney, some winery ho- hotel where we were going to be the only people there. And we're just going to rent a bunch of gear. So all three bands, of course, are just going to be goofing around writing. And I was so looking forward to that because for two weeks, we would be like, okay, we can't go anywhere. We're only here with each other. And uh, we'd either be out in the tennis court or we'd be uh, in this library room with a bunch of music gear and just probably writing and recording and just having a blast for two weeks and saying that was the greatest quarantine. Yeah. That was the the Hunter Valley. I think that was, I think that was going to be up with the Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I was like, man, if I'm going to do a 14 day, that's going to be great. And then (laughs) things got changed from there for the worse. And then finally like, Oh, you know, in between the the different provinces or States, like, Oh, that's not going to work. And the capacities were getting cut down. So I think now, Everything's looking really good, so um, it could just be straight ahead for what what's lined up. Looking forward to it. Now, in the last couple of years, when everything has sort of been stopped, has there been talk or working on a new album from you guys? Has there been any thoughts or writing or anything? Yeah, there was at first, but, you know, then it kind of goes into, you guys want to do a record? And, we're you know, we're so disappointed that we finished the Perdita record and then we weren't able to tour it. Hmm. And I think in some ways it was uh, – actually very therapeutic just to take a break you know yep. just just take a break it's like the, you know, the whole world is hurting right now and it's just like let's just hang out with our families and enjoy we all have kids around the same age so it's just really enjoy them growing up and you know deal with the uh <clears throat> the hardship of just the constant lockdowns and you know the the stresses that were going along with covid yeah so um i'm sure what's going to happen is now after a couple year break. I know Dean worked on a, a record, Trip the Witch, and, and Robert's been working on a really cool solo record. So everybody's just kind of doing their own thing. And, and, and what you're going to find out now is I bet right when this tour is done, it's going to be like, let's start on a record. Let's do this. Let's just keep going. Yeah. And then as, as we're lining up tours for the States and for Europe uh, for, for the rest of the year, I think it's just going to be like, let's keep jumping in the studio. So. Okay. Now, I love the sound of Padita. Is that the future direction for the band, or was that a one-off sort of just experimental thing you've done? It was just experimental. We've, I'm sure you know from our catalog, we've always had a song or maybe two that were similar to that to throw yeah. in. And, I, and it was just, let's just do a whole record like that. You know, just, let's just, and we wrote it, uh, the majority of it we wrote here, at my place where I have a studio and we just sat around the couch with a couple acoustics and some hand drums and just kind of arrange the songs and put the lyrics together and just kind of got it all together. And then recording was sometimes to be a few of us together, or sometimes be one person at a time or two people at a time and just kind of developing the layers. And, and uh, Robert and Dean really had some, great ideas with expanding what they want to do with the harmonies and melodies and just to continually use instruments that we haven't, we haven't touched on before. So um, in that sense, it was just uh, a, a different avenue for us to take. And I would say the next record will, will, my guess would be, it's probably going to be the hardest and loudest record we've ever had, you know, just to just say, okay, we've done that. Now let's do this and let's try something different. Or it could be totally a, a mixture of the two. Kind of don't know until we get there, you know, I and mean, we'll, we'll know and we'll know in a few more months. Like I said, we'll probably just start be itching to to recording again. Nice. Well, the main thing is, as long as you keep making them, whatever it is. Yes. And uh, it's something we do very easily and we do very uh, well together. And the fact that we enjoy doing it, you know, that's. Um, touring is physically stress stressful you know what i mean because you're just your sleep cycle and just you're just always moving and and then you get the reward of playing the shows and meeting people but uh making a record you're just stuck eight ten hours 12 Mm -hmm. hours a day just together and it's like (laughs) and it's and you're just twisting you know twisting other people's emotions to try to like get parts out or to uh you know get get the ideas that you want to cross. And uh, sometimes they're easy. Sometimes they're, they're dreadful. And, but what you get is a real record in the end. And there's, there's no other way 
to make a record. I, I, I think if a band were to make a a happy, easy record, it would probably just suck. It's yeah. like you gotta have you gotta have some stress and some differences going on within it. Good way to look at it. I love that. Now we touched on it just briefly. The last two years has been absolute doozies for everybody. But what if anything has this whole situation taught you that you'll now maintain throughout your life and career? Hmm. Probably just to cherish health. You know what I mean? It's like so many people are stricken and, 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 and God, it's just been so tough, especially with mental illness for so many people. The depression is just, it's just, it's just changed it. I mean, here in California, people are just now starting to take off the mask. If you notice from our Super Bowl and yeah. stuff like that, I mean, every, no, not only America, but the whole world is kind of sick of it. Everybody just wants to see smiling faces again, like yours. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really uh, a strange thing to, to, to deal with that for two years. So I think what we're going to see now is uh, uh, an emergence again of just people smiling in people's faces. It's almost like, Oh my God, that's, I mean, how, how many people over the last two years did you run into that say hi to you? And you're like, who the hell is that? And then you, <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You know, yeah. God, I was at your house two weeks ago. I don't even recognize you. It's just, it's, it's <laughs> I'm so like, I get away with it because I've got, you know, tattoos and things oh. that's it, identifiable. <laughs> yeah. And you got the beard too. So I'm sure that kind of sticks out yeah. from the mask. Sticks but um, yeah, it's just, this is, you know, it's been a, <clears throat> it's been a different time. So uh, I'm looking forward to things returning more so to normal. Yeah. Of what we've been that's used awesome. to. We all want yeah. looking forward to that. Now, let's look back over your career because it can be very easy to say what can change over time. And there's been a few changes, obviously, with Stone Temple Pilots. But what for you is the one thing that's always remained the same about the band? Uh, I think that we're just true to our music. I mean, plain and simply, we just we write the stuff, we live it, we breathe it, and we love it. It's just kind of um, in in the early days, not only not only for us, but every band that comes out, people. Uh, critics and and the haters everybody kind of says you know oh it's manufactured stuff like that like i mean in the pop world yes it's all manufactured you know and mm -hmm. at least here in america everybody comes from the disney school and they they can dance and they might be able to sing but you know then they turn into superstars and they act like they're writing their own songs and they you know carry themselves like like they've uh, been in the trenches but it's actually just it's so manufactured and when you get to <clears throat> our genre of rock music it's there's you can't manufacture it it's just it's either believable or it's not and it's just that truly comes from the combination of four or five people or sometimes three getting together and just having that magic and it's hard to explain what that magic is you just you just when you hear it you know it and you like it and and that's where so much of the success comes from beautiful i love that now lastly let's look ahead to the future a little bit with a prediction i want you to finish this sentence for me in 2022 stone temple pilots will uh, I want to hop on the uh, the um, galactic space uh, thing. I want to go. I want to go. I want to leave Earth just for ten minutes and just get in that vomit comet and throw up. I think it'd just be fantastic. So yes, twenty twenty two Stone Temple Pilots will travel into outer space and come back and uh, write a song about it. All right. Well, we're going to talk again next year and we'll make sure you've done it and we'll kick that off. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Can I borrow a million dollars so I can uh, get on that waiting list? Yeah. You know? Send me your details. I'll hook. No, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Venmo, yeah. please. Okay. Thank you. All right, mate. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to seeing the shows in March. Great. Yeah. We'll be there. That's a few weeks, man. I'm looking forward to that. Excellent, man. Pleasure. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. See you. See you, mate.